Hello YouTube and welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. Today I'm finally starting the nitrous install on the C5 Corvette China Vet project. So here's how I'm doing it guys. A lot of you have been asking me a lot of questions about the nitrous. I'm no guru, but I have been playing with it for 20 some years. So in order to answer your questions uh, as much as possible, what I'd like to do is just uh, do the install in two videos. I know I'm gonna run long. If I try to do this in one video, it's probably gonna be an hour long video. So what I've decided to do so that I have time to kind of explain things as I go along and you know, give you some little tips, tricks, and kind of uh, explain why I do things the way I do it. Uh, I've decided to split this up into two parts. So this first part is actually gonna be the bottle installation or bottle mounting and plumbing. And then I'll be doing the second part, which will be a video on the wiring and, uh, you know, probably just giving you like my advice and experience on, uh, you know, as far as timing, things like that. And uh, I also plan, even though I don't have everything here yet, uh, I plan to kind of go over how you would wire in different accessories, like a progressive controller, a bottle heater, um, RPM switch, throttle position sensor, yada yada. I also, I do have two different systems here, guys. I have a ZX system, which a lot of you know uses a control box, and I also have a uh, Nitrous Express, uh, Express system, which uses solenoids. So while I'm installing the ZEX kit initially, uh, when I get to the wiring part, I'm going to kind of break it down and show you how you would wire each system and, uh, you know, what you would need to run the solenoid system with the same uh, perks, I guess you would call it, as, uh, as the ZEX kit. So like I said, these videos are probably going to be 25, 30 minutes long each. So hopefully I don't lose you guys. Hopefully I'm able to answer all the questions that you've been asking me in the comments and emails and uh, Hell, let's get started. So before I mount the bottle and I'm actually probably going to use the NX bottle because it's only about half full This ZX bottle I think still has about eight pounds in it But uh, I just want to show you the reason we mount the bottle tilted or in certain directions Okay, so the label is always the front of the bottle. It's always technically the top of the bottle. And what I mean by that is if you turn the bottle sideways, industry standard is whatever side the valve comes out, that's actually the lowest point for the siphon tube. Okay, so nitrous is a liquid, guys. When it's in the bottle here, it's, you know, it's a liquid. And your tube, again, if you turn the bottle sideways, the lowest point in the bottle of your tube is going to be opposite of the label. So the tube doesn't come straight down. It's angled back. And the easiest way to remember this is the lowest point of your tube in the bottle is the same side, you know, that the nitrous comes out here, the same side as the valve. That's why we generally tilt the bottle like this because and and aim this towards the front of the car because under acceleration all that liquid is going to get pushed back to this point in the bottle so the idea is to always try to keep uh that point <laughs> submerged guys so if you mount the bottle straight up then you would actually want to mount it backwards with the label face in the front of the vehicle because your tube is going to be back here in this corner of the bottle back here. So as you accelerate, it you know, as your bottle gets low, that, you know, that liquid's going to be pushed like this if your bottle's straight up. So you would actually want to mount the label towards the front of the vehicle. In the same right, you can't mount it with a label towards the front if you're tilting it like this because if you do that then what happens your siphon tube comes uncovered you know once the bottle starts getting low and if you're forced to mount the bottle sideways let's just say 
let's just say um, that's the front of your vehicle. I'm the back of your vehicle. You're forced to mount the bottle sideways like this for some reason instead of with the valve towards the front. If you're, if you're forced to mount it like this, then you want to kind of slightly tilt it like that. That way, as the, you know, as the nitrous gets pushed back, your siphon tube is kind of at this point. I hope that makes sense. I mean, I, I hope that's a good demonstration. But, uh, but yeah, guys, you know, whichever side your label's facing, your pickup tube is on the opposite side. It's, it's picking up from the back here. So the important thing is just think about fluid dynamics, how the fluid's gonna rock when you're accelerating, you know it's gonna push the fluid. And you wanna make sure that this corner of the bottle, this back, uh, bottom corner back here, uh, no matter how you mount the bottle, that if you're accelerating, that, that tube stays covered. With that in mind, Let's head to the back of the car. All right, guys, so a lot of people like to start at the front and work their way back. I prefer to start at the back and work my way forward. So the first thing I'm doing is figuring out where I'm gonna put my nitrous bottle. Now, as you can see, I've already figured out where I'm gonna put my nitrous bottle. I'm actually gonna mount it right here, and I'm gonna explain my logic for that. Number one, it's just, you know, it's naturally gonna have it tilted and I'm only gonna have to mount one bracket really because of this, this little pocket down here is going to kind of hold the bottom of the bottle just the way the, the pocket shape, it's gonna keep the bottom from moving left to right. So really all I need is one bracket to secure the bottle here. Now, a lot of people like to mount the bottle in these C5s, they'll mount it, you know, like right up here. The reason I don't wanna mount it up there, number one, I don't want it out in the open for people to see. That's why we bought this cargo cover. Uh, number two, I really don't want the bottle to be sticking between the front seats there. Uh, and number three, I still want to be able to put my target top here. Now with the bottle mounted like this, I've already checked and my target top is gonna clear the bottle. so. You know, I don't have to worry about moving the bottle when my target tops out. And again, this way the bottle is concealed. It's out of the sun. The only bad thing about this is I won't be able to put my panel that goes right here. I won't be able to use that panel, but that's okay. I'll put it in storage. Um, I can still put the side panels on and everything. Uh, but like I said, I've, I've got this cargo cover, so you know, nobody's gonna be able to see the bottle anyway, guys. Now, I've already went under the car and I'm pretty sure where my bolts are gonna go through right here for my bracket, that's actually gonna be behind the, the uh, rear end. There's a panel there. Now, even if that's coming out right on top of the rear end, it really doesn't make a difference on the Corvette, guys, because, you know, uh, the rear end, the differential doesn't move. It's stationary, you know, it's independent rear suspension, so. Uh, don't have to worry about the rear end coming up and hitting anything. So the plan is to punch two holes right here, drill two holes, and then to drill a third hole right here for the nitrous line, the feed line, and that way it can just come straight out and, uh, and go under the car. So I know those of you who've been keeping track of this build are like, wait, I thought you were gonna run two systems. Well. I am eventually, you know, we've we've got our second system here, but for right now, we're just running the one system. I'm gonna have to upgrade the fuel pump and a few other things before we run, uh, worry about running two, uh, two systems. So what I'm gonna do is in the future, if I add a second system, I'm actually gonna make a bracket that goes all the way across and bolts to these same two bolt holes so I don't have to drill any more bolt holes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry guys any more bolt holes and uh, we'll just we'll just scoot this bottle over and have another bottle next to it and uh, these bottle brackets will actually mount to the long bracket that I'll make. And as far as the hole for my feed line, I, you know, since I'll need another hole for another feed line, uh, you know, that may end up being an extra hole and what I might do is just punch a hole here and punch a hole here. Uh, you know, for two feed, feed lines in the future. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this carpet back, 
lay my bottle down and uh, drill the holes. All right, I'm gonna mount the bottle and then figure out where I need to drill the hole for the line, which is gonna need to be even bigger. Okay, so here's where you're gonna need a wife or a kid or a, a buddy or something, guys, because uh, unless you can be two places at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath here and I'm using these very large washers here to try to even out the force because this is just fiberglass. So uh, I'm gonna go under here and run these bolts and washers up from the bottom. And then I'm going to have the wifey stick a, stick a washer and a nut on the end of the bolts here to hold the bracket. So since there's just me and her, uh, there's not a third person for a camera, but you'll see it when it's done. See where the holes come out. Uh, they're just right here, easy to get to. And then the uh, the line, the hole that I drill for the uh, actual feed line, is probably going to come out right up here, directly above the rear end. We've temporarily mounted the uh, bracket here, so that I could try to somewhat make a straight shot with the feed line. So I believe our feed line is gonna go right about here. All right, guys, so I went ahead and vacuumed all the fiberglass dust out. You can see I punched a hole here, big enough to fit my uh, feed line through. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this bracket loose again. I'm gonna lay the carpet back, and we're just gonna cut a X in the carpet over all the holes. That way, after we push the line through, it'll kind of seal up around the hole here, and, uh, well, no reason really here because the bracket's gonna be on top anyway, but that's what we're doing. So uh, I'm gonna get it done. So the bottle is mounted. We've got our line ran through here. You can see where I actually opened the bottle and froze the carpet a little bit there. But uh, our lines run through right here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go under the car and run the line to the front. And then no doubt we'll have some excess back here. We'll figure out what to do with that after we uh, figure out how much of it we got. Now, it absolutely does not matter what kind of vehicle you're working on. Whenever you're installing a nitrous system and you're deciding where to run your nitrous line, the answer is always the same. Follow the fuel lines. The reason I say follow the fuel lines is because the fuel lines are, uh, you know, from the factory, they try to route them as far away from heat sources as possible. So I do the same thing on every vehicle, guys. I always follow the fuel lines and I usually just zip tie my nitrous line, uh, my nitrous feed line to the fuel lines. Now here, you can't really, I don't think you can see where my nitrous line comes in, but it actually comes in almost directly above the differential back there. Like I said, you can't really see it, but you can see my fuel lines. I hope you can see that. Uh, those of you who've done LS swaps with just basic fuel pumps and stuff, you might recognize that guy right there. That is the Corvette filter regulator. And that's kind of where my fuel line starts. It comes out of the fuel tank, which is right above the camera here. And, uh, you know, the fuel lines loop around into our Corvette filter regulator up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull my nitrous line uh, from where it comes in back there where you guys can't see. Sorry guys, I actually can't see it either. I'm gonna have to stick my arm up in there and feel it. And then I'm just going to run my nitrous feed line uh, right alongside my fuel lines which actually go up there kind of above the transmission and come down to here there's the torque tube you can't see the fuel line I don't think with the camera but you can most definitely see the two brake lines well the fuel line is directly above that and then Then they disappear behind our uh, tunnel plate there, our cover plate. So the whole length of the X pop and everything here, they're actually, uh, my line's actually gonna be above that plate that you see with all the bolts in it. It's just gonna be loose above there. 
And then we're here at the front of the car. You can actually see the wideband wire from our wideband install video. Now, if you watch that wideband install video, then you might remember that uh, I actually ended up zip tying the wideband wire here to the fuel lines up in the uh, engine bay. So, yeah, nitrous line's gonna follow. You can see the black fuel lines up there. Uh, if you see the silver lines, those are the brake lines. About two inches above those are the fuel lines. So, yeah, guys, that's the, uh, that's the path we're gonna follow all the way to the front of the car. Then we're gonna go up uh, with the fuel lines on the driver's side, and we'll decide where we go from there after we get that ran. I've got my line all the way through the tunnel cover here. So now, like I said before, we're just gonna continue to follow the fuel lines. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to, uh, hopefully a coat hanger is long enough, I'm gonna try to run a coat hanger down um, from up above in the engine bay there. And if I get the coat, ha coat hanger down here, then I will tape the end of my nitrous line to it and pull it on up into the engine bay. So I unplugged my vacuum line from my uh, brake booster here to get it out of the way. Then I took my coat hanger, I fished it down right next to my fuel line and I just hung this end on the fuel line. Now that we're back under the car, you can see here's this end of the coat hanger. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to loop my nitrous line <laughs> back around to the other side of my header, obviously, so it doesn't wrap around it when I pull it up. And I'm just gonna tape it to the end of my coat hanger here with some electrical tape, and then I can just pull it straight up into the engine bay. All right, pulling it up. There's our nitrous line that I've pulled all the slack out. You can see I actually have quite a bit of line left here. So um, once we get everything hooked up, up here in the engine bay, I'm not sure if, oh, I'll go ahead and plug my vacuum line back in. But once everything's hooked up in the engine bay, I'm not sure, uh, not sure yet if I'm going to hide the excess up here somewhere or if once everything's hooked up i might just uh pull the excess back to the back and do like i talked about a while ago and actually loop it around underneath the carpet this is the stage in the game where you have to kind of start planning how everything's going to come together under here because where you need to figure out where you're going to mount your solenoids or in this case the zex control unit and all this has to be based on, you know, your length of lines that came with the kit, um, where you're going to pull fuel from, where you're going to have your nozzle mounted, etc. So you kind of have to plan all that out, guys. And the first place to start with is where you're going to mount your nozzle. Now, you guys who have been following this channel for a little while might remember that I actually had a subscriber that sent me this throttle body spacer. And I had actually drilled and tapped it on both sides to eventually run two stages. And uh, the issue I had was with this throttle body spacer in place, my throttle body actuator, my motor here, was actually hitting the, uh, the uh, power steering reservoir. So... I mean, my choices were make a spacer kit to space the reservoir way up here or simply go old school and, you know, plumb my, uh, plumb my pipe that runs into my throttle body here. So I decided to go old school and just plumb the rubber fitting that goes off my throttle body. So here it is, guys. I have already attached it to our <laughs> janky as heck plastic welded, uh, air bridge here but anyway you know it's just a, a threaded insert that goes through here you run a nut on it and then your nitrous nozzle just screws into it and of course faces the throttle body now a little something you want to think about when you're plumbing this in is the closer to the throttle body this is the harder the nitrous hit's going to be and also with a wet kit now with a dry kit hell you could put bins down here and and you know thread it in way down here somewhere uh but with a wet kit you want this blowing directly into the throttle body as much as possible you do not want this trying to shoot around a curve like on the truck intakes where it curves around you don't want it on the opposite end of the curve guys and the reason for that 
is because the fuel that is shooting out of this is going to be heavier than the nitrous the nitrous is going to be more of a fog and the longer distance that that travels the more the fuel particles are going to start to kind of glob together and drop and puddle and uh you know what you're going to end up having happen when you run around the corner like that is uh the fuel will puddle up and you end up having a lean condition at the back of the engine because the fuel the nitrous is still making it back there but the fuel's not so you know if you're running a dry kit that's not a big deal because you're just spraying the nitrous mist but when you're running a wet kit you're you're spraying fuel and nitrous and if you get it so far away that the fuel drop starts to drop out and puddle uh, before it gets to the back of the intake that's that's not good guys so my suggestion is uh you know if you're running a wet kit just try to get this nozzle as close to the throttle body as possible and uh and make sure it's aimed directly at the throttle body so since i've already got this on here the only reason i haven't assembled my intake yet is because i wanted to show you guys how this went together so at this point i'm going to go ahead and reassemble my whole intake assembly with my nozzle all right, boys and girls, our intake system is back on, complete with our cheap and janky ass eBay <laughs> uh, ram tube, whatever you want to call it down there, ram horn intake, uh, or you can just call it, you know, cheap looking piece of shit. That works too. But anyway, that's on there. You can see our nozzle is mounted here. I've actually got two, uh, two little... Uh, ends on it right now to seal it off because i wasn't sure if i was going to get this system hooked up before i drove this thing again but it looks like i'm going to uh, what i think i'm going to do and first i have to see how long the fuel feed line is but we're going to go ahead and tap into our fuel rail for a uh, fuel feed and guys i know uh, a lot of people watching this video may say no you don't want to do that but Here's the thing, guys. Uh, I've ran 175 shot on several engines, two LS engines, as a matter of fact. Uh, the first one you guys saw on uh, Project Steppenwolf, I never had any kind of fuel issues. Um, now, I was running a larger pump. I was running a Walbro 450. But uh, for the time being, we're only going to 100 shot until I change my fuel pump. So tapping the... Uh, the fuel line on this, uh, you know, up to 150, 175 shot should not be an issue, guys. And once I go beyond that, I am going to look into possibly getting a standalone uh, fuel cell and uh, pump and everything for the nitrous kits once I start doing the double, the double shot and all that. So for now, like I said, we're going to tap into the fuel rail. So I'm going to go ahead and get the driver's side cover off and show you where that's going to happen. Before I do that, I wanted to come over here because I do have a truck intake over here. Uh, I just wanted to come over and show you. If you're working with a truck intake, it's actually on the passenger side. I hope you guys can see that. I know it's kind of dark over here, but your, your Schrader valve here where you check your fuel pressure, what you're going to do is you're going to take a valve removal tool, put it in there, pull that valve out. Like I said, on the uh, truck intakes it's over here on the passenger side on the ls1 ls2 uh not sure about the ls3 haven't really dealt with that but on them that valve is actually over here on the driver's side so again you're just going to screw unscrew your little protective cover there and we're going to put us a rag under here there shouldn't be any fuel pressure guys because if you remember i just put this intake on but just in case there is, we're going to put us a little rag under here and unscrew our Schrader valve out of here. Now, before we do that, at this time, I do want to say, since we're going to start messing with the fuel system and uh, here pretty soon, we're going to be messing with the wiring. Now's a good time to go ahead and unhook your battery, guys, because you never know, especially if you've got kids or something like that, or, you know, you may just do it yourself. Uh, I'm going to be straight up honest here. It wouldn't be the first time I've screwed myself on something like this. But uh, you never know when somebody's going to put the key in the ignition, not realize that, you know, you've got an open fuel system and you just turn the key forward and all of a sudden it's shooting gasoline everywhere. So good idea to go ahead and unhook the battery at this point so we've got our little valve removal tool here and guys you can pick this up at 
any auto parts store it's just a couple bucks uh or walmart or hell i think i got one of these i've got two or three over there but i think i got one of them at a freaking gas station one time so i mean you can get these pretty much anywhere for a couple bucks but you just stick it in here fish it around you'll feel it catch and then you just unscrew the little valve stem there you go valve stems out now what i usually do with this is i'll put it in my uh you know whatever container i keep my nitrous jets in this is actually a pill bottle or a uh, pill container you know to remind you to take your daily medication or whatever uh got this at the drugstore i thought it would be perfect you know i wrote nitrous on one side uh fuel and zex on the other side because these are zex jets and you can see i've got it labeled you know this this is the uh fuel and nitrous jet for a 175 shot 150 125 and this is with the v8 guys uh and with 58 psi fuel pressure because uh these jets what size you're going to use for what shot will vary depending on what fuel system you're running so anyway point is i've got an extra slot up here and that's where uh oh oh i'm holding it in my camera hand uh that's where i'll usually put that little uh valve stem there that way if i ever need it you know i gotta take something apart or something i've got it right there and this is the fitting you're going to screw back on uh it's it's basically just a female i think uh dash three fitting on one end and uh dash to a male dash four fitting i think is what it is i'll try to look this up guys and put a link in the description to this part but this is our fuel rail adapter <laughs> Once you take your valve stem off or out, this guy just screws right on to the GM fuel rail. Uh, this will work on the truck uh, and the car. So either manifold you got, either fuel rail you got, uh, this will work for you. You just need to make sure you've got it clocked where you need it before you tighten it up. And then your fuel line is going to screw onto this and go to either your fuel solenoid or your, in my case, uh, ZEX control unit. Or if you're using a NX Proton kit, you know, it'll go to their control unit. You get the picture. This is gonna be your fuel feed for your nitrous. So if you guys remember what I said about making sure uh, you had everything was going to reach and work together, making sure you knew where everything was gonna be, before you started hooking it up. This is a good example, guys. Because of my fuel rail cover. Now, if I wasn't running a fuel rail cover and didn't care what this looked like, which, I mean, I kinda don't, but at the same time I do, because it's just in my nature, guys. Uh, but if I wasn't running the fuel rail covers, I could easily turn this up and I could just run this nitrous or this uh, fuel line straight across the intake and you know just move it every which way and pretty much put my control unit anywhere I wanted to. But because I am using the fuel cover and because this comes out at a right angle instead of straight out, uh, I'm forced to go down with it. I can't go that way or this way and I can't go out and loop around because of this angle and my fuel rail cover. So what I had to do was run my fuel line underneath the snout of my intake over to this side where i'm actually going to run it underneath my throttle position sensor wire here it's on top of it at the moment but that's going to change i'm going to run it around here and it's actually going to come up through here and be tucked underneath this cover and then my control unit is going to mount right here on the side of my battery tray once that's mounted, you can see my fuel and nitrous line should be able to go right over there to my nozzle. And of course, I will probably tuck them down and zip tie them uh, to my AC line there so they'll you know, not be flopping around. But that's how I'm setting this up for now. We'll have this right here. And what that's gonna allow me to do is I'll probably take my nitrous line run it back here uh, across the back of the intake manifold. You won't be able to see it uh, because where it's tucked back into the firewall there. And then I will probably actually make about two loops 
I'll make about two loops in the nitrous line and the loops will be back here behind the engine so you won't see those so there's going to be no need for me to pull any slack back to the uh, hatchback area uh, since the loops will be hidden up here and that'll allow me to go ahead go under the car and zip tie my nitrous line wherever i can to the fuel lines or whatnot under the car just to keep it from flopping around a little bit so as i said i was going to uh, i routed this over this is my fuel line routed it down between my coils here and it goes into my control unit my zx control unit and I have run the nitrous feed line behind the intake here over to the passenger side. Now I did not loop the wire around behind here. I actually just looped it around right here, but that's fine. It's out of the way. Uh, the way it's sprung, it's not gonna fall over on the headers or anything, but I'm going to mount my control unit. I actually have a bracket on here that I made to mount to a truck fuel rail. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch one bolt hole in the side of my battery bracket case here and just use that bracket that I used to use to mount it on the truck fuel rail. And I'm just going to mount it right here on the side of my uh, my battery shield protector, whatever you call it. Okay, guys, we got our control unit mounted. And really, the only thing left to do plumbing-wise is to pick our jets and put them in. Now, I'm actually going to be starting at a 100 shot. So we have, you know, our fuel jet, our nitrous jet, and uh, you do not want to get these mixed up, guys. Trust me. I will be going over different settings in the next video, uh, as well as the wiring, a bunch of other stuff. For our 100 shot, for our fuel jet we have a 28 i think yep we got a 28 we just slip that pill in like so and screw our fuel line on and then our nitrous jet is a 46 same thing guys slip it in there and screw your nitrous line on. The only thing left to do is tighten our connections. Go over it one last time. Tighten everything up. Open our bottle. Make sure we don't have any nitrous leaks. Then we have to hook our battery back up and uh, turn our key forward a couple times to get the fuel rail primed and check for fuel leaks. Since we still have the wiring to go, I will cover that in the next video. All right, guys, this video is running kind of long. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm actually gonna break this up into two videos. So all the plumbing's done. In the next video, I'm gonna cover wiring, uh, jet selection, you know, working around your fueling. Sometimes you need jets that they don't give you guys if you want to uh, get your fueling spot on, get your AFRs right where you want it. But for now, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. So if you liked part one, if you want to keep track of this, make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell so you know when part two comes out, and uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it, guys. Share it with a friend. I'll see you next time for part two here on Bad Luck Garage.